Yeah, I think we're going back to where our grandfather taught us how to how to be sustainable and, and think of the future, how we're going to do that, not for, you know, tens of years ahead, but thousands of years ahead. And if we utilize all of our biomass properly, we'll be able to be self-sufficient in energy and food production at the same time. Welcome to Green Energy Futures, your guide to the green energy revolution that's already underway. Hi, David Dodge here for Green Energy Futures. Today we bring you the story of an integrated biorefinery. It's a three-pronged approach that combines raising beef with a biogas operation and an ethanol plant. The project is called Growing Power Harry Hills, and it's located near Vegreville, Alberta, east of Edmonton. So what we have here is what we like to call the virtuous circle. We have a feedlot, an ethanol plant, and a large-scale anaerobic digester. So the feedlot produces 500 tons a day of waste, manure. The digester turns that into energy, produces energy for the ethanol plant. And the ethanol plant takes grain and produces ethanol and also uh, a co-product we call distiller's grains that goes right back to the feedlot, closing the circle and feeding those cattle. Trevor Nickel is the general manager of Highmark Gas the company selling the technology behind the anaerobic digester. What he's holding are the leftovers from the anaerobic digestion process. Apparently, it makes great potting soil. But it all starts with the feedlot. At any one time, you'll find 36,000 head of cattle on their property. And with that many cows comes the sweet smell of opportunity. Feedlot has two products. The product you like to, to eat, which is beef, and the product that nobody wants to talk about, but it has a lot of value left over, which is manure. Now the manure contains a lot of energy. We can mine that energy with an anaerobic digester, recover that energy, make electricity. We also end up making another product from that, which is uh, thermal energy, and a third product, which is the fertilizer. Uh, the thermal energy and the electricity, uh, we could sell those, but we could also use them next door just behind the fence at our own ethanol plant. The ethanol plant takes grain, produces a couple products. It produces ethanol and produces what we call wet distiller's grains, which is the protein part of the grain that's left over, a little bit of fiber and lots of protein. And that can go right back to the feedlot, feed the cattle. Burton Catelco is one of the founders behind this plant. And his mantra since taking over the family farm was to diversify. This whole project is a giant machine for adding value to grain. Nothing of value or waste leaves the plant. That value add mentality started with the feedlot. What we did was, uh, you know, we grew the uh, the feed yard to which something was uh, sustainable and matched our land base, uh, was a, a big enough number so that we could participate in the economies of scale with producing this, this good beef. A successful feedlot is the first part of this green energy tripod. It generates 500 tons of cow poop a day. Add another 200 tons a day of organic waste from nearby municipalities and you've got the feedstock for the second part of this operation, the anaerobic digester. The digester breaks down the cow poop and the food waste into methane. Right now the methane is, is going into uh, generators uh, that produce electricity and is putting power back into the grid. And so right now we can produce enough power from these cattle to uh, run about 2,500 homes, which is our local uh, community of Eggerville. And so we feel an important part of the local community. And as an added bonus, there's about three times more potential energy in a load of municipal organic waste than there is in cow poop. And they charge a tipping fee. The final piece of the puzzle is the ethanol plant. What we did research on was to produce ethanol, fuel grade ethanol was a huge user of energy in the form of heat in their fermenters and distillation process. And so our next step was add, to add a, an ethanol plant that produced fuel grade ethanol and use that surplus heat off the generators. Their ethanol plant produces 40 million liters of ethanol a year which they sell down the road to the refineries just outside of Edmonton. 
The leftovers are feed for the cattle, closing the loop. Highmark Renewables has even trademarked their integrated biorefinery and is selling the technology in the U.S. and beyond. Beyond Vegreville, so there, there is already an example of an integrated biorefinery just like this one on the ground. It's the largest one we think we'll see for a while in Oakley, Kansas at a 50 million gallon ethanol plant. So many times the size of this facility uh, with a very large digester equivalent of 11 megawatts. So again, five times the size of the digester here based on our design. The whole idea is to utilize waste and diversify farm operations. Adding value to farm products makes sense, not just from an economic standpoint, but from an ecological one as well. I always think of my grandfather and when he taught us about agriculture and uh, he was uh, he did things in a renewable sustainable way where he he grew his own energy to produce food because he had a team of horses and and they ate oats and so now we're doing it in, in a just a little different scale and and using some different technology but what we're doing is is producing our own energy so we can produce food so why are there only a few projects like this in Alberta Trevor Nichols says increasing Alberta's very low carbon price of $15 a ton would really help advance clean technology. At $35 or $40 or $55, we could build 20 of these plants in Alberta. That would be the biggest thing that we could do to reduce the risk in building these facilities is to see a $35 or $50 price on carbon. On their own, a feedlot, an anaerobic digester, or an ethanol plant might not make sense. But by stacking their functions and finding value in waste, these three facilities work together to create something better than the sum of their parts. Learn more about this integrated biorefinery at our blog, photos, and podcast at greenenergyfutures.ca. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and tell your friends. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge. If you like this episode, you should watch Net Zero 101, our video on the burgeoning Net Zero home movement. Subscribe today. We produce a new video every two weeks.